Good afternoon and uh, welcome to the next instalment of my uh, Aconcagua again prep videos. And uh, firstly, I just want to uh, say a big thank you to a couple of people, and uh, you know who you are, who have uh, very kindly donated to my Altitude Tent Fund. Uh, in the last video, I talked about how I was trying to raise £450 um, in order to be able to hire an Altitude Tent uh, in December, which will really help with my acclimatisation. Um, so the two people who have done that, uh, I won't mention any names, but thank you very much for your very kind donations. I've still got £250 to uh, raise, so if anybody would like to help me with that, then please drop me a message or um, drop me a line. Any uh, donations and sponsorship for that is massively appreciated. But um, yeah, I just wanted to take you through some kit today because I've been amassing some kit recently that I'm going to need for the Aconcagua expedition. Some of it's uh, really specialised and just basically adding uh, to my already uh, fairly extensive collection of kit the uh, the elite himalayan adventures team who I'm going out with who I'm going out there on the expedition with stipulate that you must have certain pieces of kit and uh, so yeah I've been acquiring those and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you down here some of the stuff I've been getting just to give you a glimpse of uh, the kind of kit that you need to tackle a high altitude mountain Okay, so first up uh, are a couple of pairs of Rab Power Stretch um, Pro Pants. I'm just reading the label there. Uh, these are made of a pa uh, Power Tech material. They're basically a, a Long John type material that's got a, a fleece lining. So they're for use on really cold days to go under other kit. Two pairs of those, <clears throat> but I've also got some Merino wool tights for when it's, uh, or uh, Long Johns for when it's. Uh, a little bit warmer further down but these are going to be useful sort of from high camp two and above on Aconcagua and especially useful on summit day. Uh, next up is a, something I didn't have last time and these are the uh, Rab Photon Pants. Um, so these are basically a um, thermal uh, pants that is very thin but it's got like a um, Synthetic down uh, material is what it's made out of. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, these are just, um, <coughs> sorry about that, I've just got in from a 10 mile run, so I'm a little bit uh, hoarse in the throat. Um, these are great for higher up on the mountain, um, not necessarily for summit day, but just on really cold days um, from kind of high camp one to high camp three. I didn't have these last time, they would have made a massive difference to my comfort on the mountain. And uh, they've got the nice um, reinforced knees, reinforced seats. They've got a um, zip all the way down the side on both sides, which is really handy because when you're at high altitude and especially confined to a tent, getting in and out of your clothing can be an absolute mission and um, because of the altitude. So you find yourself really out of breath. So stuff that's very easy to access and easy to get on is fantastic. The other thing with these is because they've got zips on both sides, if you do need to have a toilet dash on the mountain, which is very uh, likely, then they're very easy to get off as well. So uh, possibly a bit too much information there, but just keeping it real. Um, then the other bit of kit I've been uh, just bought is some lightweight um, trekking trousers for lower down the mountain. These are the Mountain Equipment Ibex Pants. Tried them on the other day, really nice. They're made of a stretchy material. They'll keep the wind out, but they're also going to keep cool as well. And they're pretty much for trekking from Penitentes to Confluenza and Base Camp because it's likely to be quite hot. And uh, they're really good kind of all-round mountain trousers. Great in the UK as well. And uh, they fit really well and they're stretchy, so you've got plenty of room to be able to scramble about in and not have your range of motion limited. Okay, moving over next, I've got some hardware here, which <clears throat> some of this stuff I've not used before. Um, so first up is an Ascender or a Juma. Um, some of the stuff that the guys like to do when you're out there is they use Aconcagua as a preparatory mountain for climbing an 8,000 metre peak, which is my ultimate goal. And so they do some training with you um, on some of the techniques that you need. So uh, using a fixed line up a mountain and then using a Juma to help pull yourself up with is one of the pieces of kit that you need to get used to using. So I've got a right-handed... Uh, ascender there <clears throat> from Black Diamond. Next I've got a Petzl Descender. So these are used for basically rappelling down 
from high ground on a rope so if you're on really steep ground where you could fall slip and potentially die then um, you have one of these to rope yourself into using a harness and then descend down the mountain by b laying yourself down next i've got some uh, carabiners with a, a locking gate really important for use on the harness which i'm yet to get uh, again roping in that kind of stuff on steep ground that will no doubt do some training on that um, and then also a collection of <coughs> carabiners that are just uh, snap gate ones as well again they combine with it all together those are what the guys at Elite Himalayas, Himalaya, Elite Himalayas put my teeth in adventures have stipulated you must have on expedition so yeah that's what I've been amassing so far but I've got something else to show you well which is a little bit special which I will just uh, get and sort out right now Okay, next up is one of the most expensive pieces of kit that you need for going on an expedition to climb mountains such as Aconcagua at high altitude. Uh, these are a pair of uh, high altitude boots, Scarpa 8000 meter Phantom Pros. Um, very specialised piece of kit and they are the main defence against absolutely freezing cold temperatures which without them can potentially lead to uh, frost nip, frostbite in toes and feet. Um, last time I was on Aconcagua, I had the Scarpa 6,000 metre boots and they just were not enough. Um, on summit day, my feet, well, I didn't feel my feet for about 10 hours. Came off the mountain with frost nip, fortunately no frostbite, but it took a good few months for my feet to return back to normal and particularly my toes. So uh, the, uh, the elite Himalayan guys stipulate that you have to take a pair of 8,000 metre boots out there. <clears throat> and these are basically suitable for getting to the top of the very highest mountain in the world, which is Everest. So with these... Uh, what you've got is a few bits and pieces. So first up, you've got an inner booty, which is uh, thermal. Keep your feet really warm. And that goes on your foot first. Secondly, you've got the boots or the main boot. And the construction is you've got a second layer, which again is highly thermal, um, reinforced, really quite heavy. And then you've got the outer layer as well, <clears throat> it's difficult to show you with one hand, but this is basically a, an outer layer of protection with also your built-in uh, gaiter here, which is for keeping snow out of your feet and keeping your feet as dry as possible. These boots are made of out-dry, which is basically similar to Gore-Tex, but it basically keeps all the water out. <clears throat> but um, those are the boots. When they're all done up, this is what they look like. And uh, they are a serious bit of kit. You've got the lip on the front here and also on the back because they're meant to be used with uh, crampons, which if it's snowy will be absolutely essential. So um, so those are the Scarpa boots. I'll uh, show you what they're like once they're on, but they are almost comedy boots. So let's have a look. Oh yeah, boot me up. <sighs> now, uh, obviously those boots have taken me about a minute per boot to put on because I've got a nice comfy sofa here to be able to put them on. But uh, when you're up at um, just under 6,000 metres altitude, stuck in a tent, nowhere to sit apart from on the floor, Trying to get those boots on becomes an absolute mission. And I remember trying to put on the 6,000 metre boots last time at four o'clock in the morning when we were setting off a summit day. And it must have taken me about 15 minutes per boot to put them on. It was absolutely horrendous. So um, I'm expecting it to be the same next time. But um, but yeah, anyway, those are the boots. Serious piece of kit. And I'm sure you'll agree, very sexy.
Anyway, uh, thanks for watching this video. I've got to get these uh, altitude trousers off because I'm sweating cods in them. But um, yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. Like I say, I've got £250 left to raise for my uh, altitude tent fund. If anybody out there is willing to donate and would like to sponsor me, be massively appreciated. You can either do it through my GoFundMe page, which is down in the description of this video, or send me a message and I can send some account details through. But uh, all funds help and are massively appreciated with helping me take on this significant challenge and chasing my dreams. But I uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Over and out.